I'm here with Matt Barry, uh, the CEO of Freelancer. Matt, welcome. Thanks for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure. And you're here at the Singular University program, and uh, I love having CEOs like you at SU. Uh, it really, uh, uh, the diversity of, of leaders that we have from around the world, learning about exponential technologies is, is extraordinary. And Freelancer is a, is a great company. It's, mm -hmm. it's a prototypical company that I call an exponential organizational tool that can help small teams of individuals, uh, individuals or teams or even executives do things far more efficiently. Let's start a little bit with uh, what is Freelancer? How do you right. describe the, the company and service? We're the world's largest freelancing marketplace globally. And what we do fundamentally is we connect two types of entrepreneurs on both sides of the planet, which I think is quite magical. Yeah. On one side, we've got the entrepreneur being the small business person, right? And that may be in the US or the UK or in the developed world somewhere who is entrepreneurial by heart because that's why they're running their own company, but they're typically under-resourced. They don't have a lot of money, don't have a lot of time, but they've all these ideas all the time. What if I had a website, or what if I could get um, you know, something designed, or what if I could get some software written, or an iPhone application so I could deliver my pizzas you know, at night time, or whatever it may be. And uh, in the past, it's been very hard for them to find someone to get the job done. It's been very, very expensive. You know, they'll find a web designer after a few months and get quoted thousands of dollars, and they simply you know, give up at that point. Um, but what we do is we provide them with a digital workforce from people all around the world in any skill set now you can imagine to get things done. On the other side of the world, in the developing world, what we do is we empower a whole new class of entrepreneur that's rising up to basically help the West get things done uh, as a service provider. So yeah. you might be in Bangladesh and you might want to be a search engine optimizer expert. And locally, the jobs might be very grim. And if you find a job, it might not pay very well. But now what we do is we connect you to a whole you know, universe of clients from all around the world to basically work in any technical field you want, any time of day, at your own pay rates. And the pay rates are orders of magnitude higher than what you get locally. Mm -hmm. And so we think it's kind of magical. It's kind of win-win on both sides of the equation. And um, as a result, you know, we've got a marketplace now of about 7 million people globally from every country on the planet. Four million jobs have gone through the site to date, and we rank in the top 300 or 200 websites, you know, depending on the day of the week. That's fantastic. So just hit those numbers again. Uh, you have seven million people in the workplace, meaning uh, the freelancers who are providing the services, yes? So it's about 6.7 million exactly today. Okay. Um, it's about 75, 80% of them are freelancers. So primarily from countries like India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, the Philippines, China, but it's a very, very long tail. So we have uh, 234 countries, regions, territories represented globally. Wow. And about 25% or 20% um, are, are basically employers. And um, the, the vast bulk of them are either individuals or small businesses in the US, where 50% of the jobs are coming from, uh, the United Kingdom, where about 10% of the jobs are coming from. And interestingly enough, India now is the third biggest poster of jobs at 7% due to a very interesting effect of uh, arbitrage, which we're actually seeing in the labor markets now, yeah. Australia, Canada, and again, a very, very long tail. So how long has uh, Freelancer been around? So um, three and a half years ago, uh, I basically started buying up sites in a, a bit of a roll up of the space. So it started with a Swedish company called Get a Freelancer, um, which had about half a million users. Uh, and since then I've bought, bought about nine companies, culminating in July of this year, I bought the fifth biggest marketplace, which was Scriptlance. And three weeks ago, I announced the fourth biggest marketplace, which is VWorker out of um, uh, Florida. And so uh, the history of all the marketplaces together and everything's been merged into a, a, a one global marketplace called Freelancer, where you can now transact in you know, 15 currencies, 10 languages you know, in any country on the planet, um, to 6.7 million users. And uh, the history is 12 years. That's fantastic. What a yep. great success story that is. And it's, game uh, game. And it's, it's really it's, uh, it's an extraordinary benefit to the world. Well, I mean, I think, it, I mean, the whole reason why I actually started this, this, this business was that I was actually looking to get to work, some work done, yeah. and I couldn't find anyone to get it d done for me. <laughs> I was looking to get some basic data entry to do a, a website, so I needed to get a spreadsheet filled out with a list of stores that I could put into like a web directory. And I was going to pay $2 per line item in a spreadsheet, and I was trying to get a little brother or a little sister or a friend of mine to do the job. And it took months, and they had soccer practice and exams, and it was just impossible. So in frustration, I went to the internet, and I posted a job on, ironically, Get a Freelancer. And um, I walked away, came back to my computer. Three hours later, I had 74 emails saying, I'll do the job. And I was just, I was like, I can't. And it was, you know, I'll do it for $1,000, $500, $300, $200, $100. I thought, this can't, this can't be real. <laughs> so I hired a team in Vietnam. They did the job in three days. It was perfect. I didn't have to pay them until the job was done. 
I thought this is absolutely mind blowing. I said, well, what is going on here? Yeah. And then when I dug down, I realized that there's a, I mean, there's a confluence of macro trends which are really you know, causing this to appear. One is um, that the internet is in the middle of delivering its probably one of its biggest tectonic shifts yet. And that is that 70% of the world's population are about to join the internet. I mean, the planet yeah. of 7 billion people, there's about 2 billion people on the internet. So only about a third of the world's population is connected. But the other two thirds are connecting now at a, a double digit and triple digit rate. And you know, the remarkable thing is um, that the other 5 billion people on this planet live on somewhere around $8 a day or less. So the first thing they want to do when they go online is raise their you know, economic you know, status by getting a job. And what I didn't realize at the time was that the disparity in terms of wages globally is huge. I mean, the average wage in the, in the United States is about $123 a day. The average wage in India is $2.25 a day. It's a 55 to 1 gap. Huh. So, you know, we can provide jobs to someone in India in an order of magnitude of what they get paid um, you know, locally and still deliver services that you know, extremely cost effective for a whole class of entrepreneurs being small businesses you know, where they can actually afford for the first time. You know, I mean, if you're a cafe, you might not be able to afford a $5,000 website, but for $100, $200, you'd get it done in a snap. Awesome. Right? And so you know, there's that big macro trend. The other big macro trend is that you know, software is eating the world. Every industry is waking up to be a software business. But the corollary of that is that the way we interact when we do work today in each of these industries is through software. Yep. It's through a application maybe in the cloud. If I do graphic design now, there's, you know, there's online web apps or there's maybe a tool I downloaded software and I can email you a file. If I do copywriting, it's a Word document. If I do uh, financial research, it's an Excel spreadsheet. If I do CAD CAM today, again, it's a software package where I can email a file to someone. So the chances are that anyone, any time of the day, someone on the other side of the world can be doing a job for you, again, for potentially a fraction of the cost. And so you know, all these trends are coming together, which I think is, is really magical, because I think freelancing is really the vanguard of an economic revolution that's <coughs> sweeping through the developing world, as people suddenly can wake up and go, hey, I want to work in this very niche area in technology. Maybe it's in um, mechanical engineering. Maybe there's no jobs locally, but now I can work for a global client base and earn fantastic income. That's amazing. So just yeah. to hit those trends, number one, we've got uh, uh, this cost disparity between the two parts of the world, and the, the lower yep. cost piece, piece of the world is coming online yep. in massive groves. We have two billion going to five billion people coming online That's in, the right. next, in the next uh, eight years. Number yep. two, you were saying. So, so yeah, number two is um, basically that every industry is becoming a software business. So, okay. that, so the tools in which we interact are becoming software, and the way I communicate with you is by sending you a file. Yep. The third big um, thing is that education is now opening up to everyone, to yep. all. So if I want to learn how to design a logo now, I can go to YouTube and watch a video on how to design a corporate logo. Or I can go to a website like Invato's um, Tuts sites, and I can get a tutorial in using Adobe Photoshop version 5.0 or, or whatever it may be. But if I want to learn something even like quantum mechanics, I can go to Harvard, Stanford, MIT, and you know, all the world's you know, knowledge in these universities is now available for free online. In fact, it has been for many, many, many years. So everybody becomes educated and become part of your workforce. Well, I mean, the even bigger thing now is that with Coursera, Udacity, and all these online um, you know, courses, this is going to have a tremendous impact in the developing world. I mean, if you look at Sebastian Thrun's um, sure. introduction to AI course, which is my former uh, university, Stanford, I mean, normally 200 people did this class. Last year, when he offered it, 170,000 people enrolled in yep. this computer science course. But 25,000 graduated, and the top 453 students, not a single student actually went to Stanford, apparently. Yeah. So, so, I mean, but imagine the impact if you're in Bangladesh, or if, if you're in India, or you're in the Philippines, where now you can access a very high quality Stanford or Harvard level education online for either free, or they've announced they're going to do $1 per course, right? Yep. And if a master's degree is $100, right? It's, it's, it's going to be absolutely amazing. And, and the win-win here is not only is the rest of the world going to be you know, ac have access to this amazing education as long as they have a connection to the internet, but these universities like Stanford and Harvard and so forth, which currently turn away 99.99% .99 of their customers, suddenly have a bigger pool to draw from that are you know, actually pre-qualified because they've gone through these courses. So, I mean, all these trends are coming together, you know, education and you know, online tools and the rest of the world connecting and so forth which um, means it's a, it's a fantastic place to be really sitting in the middle with a marketplace of ah, getting things done. Amazing. Let, let's, if you would, and I know it's an exhaustive list, yeah. so the top 10 uses for entrepreneurs that, that uh, use freelancing, what would those be? It's constantly surprising us. Yeah. Uh, so three and a half years ago, the top jobs were very IT related. It was website design, 
you know, we can get a website done for you know, fifty dollars, hundred dollars, a few hundred dollars, a few thousand dollars. Um, copywriting, um, mobile phone application development, search engine optimization, and, and so forth. Today we have over 600 categories of work. So we have an astrophysics. 600. 600. Astrophysics, aerospace engineering, <laughs> genetic engineering, biotechnology. We even have a quantum mechanics section, right? <laughs> and believe it or not, we actually see projects go through these, you know, not, not in massive volumes, but we see projects go through. And increasingly, the sophistication, complexity of work, you know, year by year by year is going through the roof. Wow. And, and we, you know, as more types of work digitize because the internet gets richer and the, the tools we have to interact get better and better and better, we expect to see a, a lot more. But you know, some of the things that are just ama amazing, I'll give you some crazy examples. Yeah. So the other day, someone posted a job which is designed for me a dune buggy I can drive around at 30 kilometers an hour, like the CAD CAM mechanical schematics for that. About 40 people were bidding on that job for under $300, huh. right? Um, there were things like, um, we had a researcher in the, in the, in the, in the swamps of Africa somewhere, um, I think doing some research on the pygmy hippo, and he needed to get a poster designed. Um, uh, so he was actually there saying, I am in the swamp with the pygmy hippos on my satellite phone. I need a poster designed for $100. Can someone do it for conservation <laughs> purposes? And got it done. But I mean, the really mainstream uses are really, you know, a mobile phone application will cost you $650 on average, and that gets delivered to the Apple store. So if you've got an idea for a mobile phone app, uh, you can sketch maybe out a, you know, a rough idea of what you want, but you can't actually do the programming. You know, on average, is about 300 a day going through the site, where for average $650 delivered into the app store for you. Wow. And so school kids are getting this done. 15-year-old you know, school kids are coming to me saying, I've got three apps developed through, um, through Freelancer. I've got one to help find your car when you go shopping and um, you lose it. Uh, it's because you take a photo and it has the GPS coordinates when you, when, you, when you leave the car. I did another one, which was basically you lose your pet and you hit a button. It will notify all the vets in the local area your pet's gone missing and so on. So you know, even ki school kids are becoming entrepreneurs awesome. and you know, starting businesses <laughs> and building revenue streams. Right? And I think that's amazing. Right? In terms of like the, the, the high end, so if we think about you know, large enterprise and corporates. Well, can, can I okay. stay on the entrepreneur here? Yep. Uh, because there's a lot more. I mean, there's the, the website, the yep. app, but I'm sure you do a whole range of you know, logo designs, yep. uh, business plans. So, what if, so just if you could, uh, more of a, a list of the, for the entrepreneur. So okay. entrepreneurs watching this right now, yep. they're about to start their company, yep. and they have a whole set of things they need to do. Yep. What would they use so you let's, for? So let's start at the beginning. Okay. The first thing you might want to do is you might want to brainstorm a name for your company. Yep. Right? So you can post a contest maybe for $100, uh, which is basically a crowdsourcing uh, model where yep. you put up a prize and people from around the world compete. And so you might say, I want a dom the domain name to be free. I want, I want to have a, an idea for the name. Just submit it, right? And so for that, you might get maybe 300 entries for $100 or $150. And you only award the, the name that you choose. That's right. Or you can, you can decide how you want. Okay. So if you want to give the person in second place or third place a prize, okay. you can do that as well. Sure. Um, you then might want a logo. So again, you could crowdsource the logo. And for about $300, you get, it on average, about 300 designs. So you can have the, as the designs come in, you can say, change the colors. I don't like this style. Change the font and so on. And you get an amazing experience. I've seen actually contests for three hundred dollars. They get up to one thousand six hundred entries submitted wow. from around so the world. So, in one sense, this is what other folks know ninety nine designs to do. Oh, correct. I mean, we, we do everything they do, um, but instead of having a you know, couple hundred thousand designs, we've got about one point five million designs at the moment. So, <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's just sheer, sheer numbers, right? Sure. Uh, but they're another great Australian company. Yeah. Um, but from there, you might want to get um, a, you know, a business card design. You can do it in a similar manner. You might want to get your website designed. And, they, and your website's really, they range from maybe $50 up to thousands of dollars, yeah. right? But a few thousand dollars. We have a guy on our site, for example, that started eight years ago with two guys in a room as a service provider in India doing a website, $65 websites for cafes and you know, small business in maybe in a, a gift store in Ohio or whatever it may be. He now makes a million dollars a year building $65 websites. He has 120 people working for him, and they just churn out, you know, these basic websites for you know your, your real estate agent in Kansas or, wow. or whatever it may be. Um, I've talked about mobile phone apps. Um, yeah, it, being, being, I mean, people will help could help you with your business plan, I assume. Yep, yeah, there's a business plan section. Um, um, uh, copywriting. Uh, yep. If you if you want someone to you know write about any topic uh, you want or produce a lot of content for your website, you can get that done. And the, the going rate for that is um, you know five six hundred words, maybe um, twenty dollars for. Excellent content, ten dollars for okay content, and you know, you know, and 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 so forth. So, so you literally, for as as an army of a single person, yeah. as an entrepreneur with a vision and a passion, yeah. uh, you could use freelancer to get every stage of your company executed to the point of starting revenue. 
That, in fact, and not just starting revenue, but building revenue to a, quite a significant level. So you have some amazing examples of people who've started companies uh, as an entrepreneur using Freelancer. Yep. Let's talk about a few of those. Okay, so a classic example is actually my business partner in Freelancer. He started off... Um, His name? Uh, Simon Clausen, who's one of Australia's top uh, IT uh, entrepreneurs. He actually started off um, uh, building a company called uh, PC Tools, which is in the uh, antivirus space. Okay. And he had a freemium uh, business model behind antivirus, which is basically, here's a free version of antivirus, and if you want some features later on, you, you pay. Now, he started by outsourcing his first program for $1,000 to an Indian company. They got the application developed. He put it on downloads.com. And the way it worked was you get a virus on your laptop. You search into Google for free antivirus. After 20 minutes, you find um, PC tools. You download it. It runs for three hours on your laptop, says, yes, we found viruses. Do you want to remove them? You say yes. Please insert your credit card, pay $49.95 per year. I mean, the <laughs> ultimate hostage premium <laughs> business model. But he bootstrapped for that with no external revenue to $40 million US dollars. So right? he went literally so from no external financing to using, US using freelancer and spending how much money probably to get his business going? Uh, it was $1,000. That was it. And then bootstrap. But it wasn't using freelancer. It was actually using a competitive site. But okay. uh, it was before my time. And that's why he actually backed, backed right. me with this company. But... But it gives you an example. I mean, Dig.com started with $60, and um, that was a, a social news site that you know, got offers for you know, $100 million, $200 million from Google, etc. And this was all bootstrapped. So you're, um, literally going, you're literally going from using this crowd activities for very small dollars yeah. to building $100 million values. That's right. And the, the, the reason why is there are 2 billion people on the internet. Those 2 billion people are 2 billion potential customers. So if you have a product or service that resonates it can take off at astronomical speeds yeah. in some sectors, consumer internet, um, you know, mobile apps, and, and so on. So uh, <clears throat> re remaining with the entrepreneur yep. here uh, who's going to use Freelancer to help launch their company, yep. uh, what's your advice to that entrepreneur? How do they come in? If you had to sort of list the top five things that they should be mm -hmm. uh, thinking about when they use Freelancer, how to best utilize it to be yep. successful, what's okay. your advice? Well, I mean, the first thing is, if you're going to start a company, there's never been a better time. It's never been easier, and it's never been cheaper mm -hmm. to do so, right? right. Um, most, I mean, every company today is basically an internet company, and all the things you need to build an internet company today are free. All the software is free, Linux and MySQL and, 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 and so forth, all the, you know, all the tools, we can, you know, voice over IP, Gmail, and so on, right? And the great thing about that, all these internet technologies, is freelancers are available. We've got millions of freelancers to that help you use these tools and get them built, right, right. Um, into, into a, a business. Um, the best thing I'd suggest you do is, first of all, just go on and browse the projects that are there, right? We have 600 categories. Go look at maybe the mobile phone section or the web development section or whatever your area might be and see what other people are doing and how they're wording their projects and what they're paying and, and so forth. And that, it, I mean, we're at ground zero on the internet for mm -hmm. the forefront of innovation for you know, entrepreneurs and technology and, and small business. So there's an amazing resource there. Um, the, the second thing is just give it a go, right? I mean, it's free to sign up. It's free to post a project. And you know, you, people from all around the world will start bidding on it. And once you start talking to the freelancers, looking through the samples of work, they'll give you ideas. They'll tell you, hey, I've done you know, similar sort of projects. Why don't you do it like this? Or why don't you do it like that? And, and so forth. And so really, I mean, like all things with entrepreneurship, it's really just give it a go. And, yeah. and through trial and error, you'll figure Experiment. it out. Experiment, yeah. Uh, how is the best way to maximize the number of uh of uh, freelancers out there giving you product work, do you is it uh, interacting with the with the freelancers? Yeah. So um, the, the the greater the description you can provide of right. what you want, the better outcome you'll have. Because when you're working from someone with someone on the outside of the world, there's there is room for interpretation. In you know, so if you just wrote a one line sentence of "I need a website," <laughs> yeah, there could be anything, right? right? And so the the you know the more you the more you put into your description, the better uh, outcome you'll get in terms of the bids. Then the key after that is really communication, right? The more frequently and, and the better you communicate with, with freelancers. And I, I've seen some amazing examples. The other day I was uh, in the UK, in London, yeah. doing a segment for the BBC, and there's a financial analyst working from home doing financial models for pension funds on things like um, infrastructure projects, uh, you know, tollways and so on. And he needed a mathematician to develop these models in MATLAB to be able to you know, do his research and present his, you know, present his findings. He hired a guy in Pakistan, right, a PhD student in Pakistan who was doing these mathematical models. And what they did was they got an iPad with Skype video chat. And when he sat down in front of his computer, he put his iPad just on the stand 
and the streaming video quality now to someone like Pakistan is unbelievable, right? <laughs> I mean, it was just like the guy was in the on the room with him, right? And you know, he'd get up in the morning, have his cup of tea, sit down, put the the iPad there, do the video call, and then they'll just sit there and talk all day like they were in the same room together. So, you know, you know, the, the ability to communicate now with anyone on the planet is getting better and better and better and better. Yeah. And that means that the ability for us to work with anyone on the planet is 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 fantastic. Huh. Um, so communicating with your freelancer to make sure that they can they uh, you extract the greatest value out of them. Uh, what about the amount that you are putting up uh, to in, to get the work done? What's your advice there? Always go for quality first, yeah. and then go for price. Right. Um, the way it works is you put a budget range down. I mean, the average project on freelancer goes for two hundred dollars, yeah. and for that you get about two thousand dollars worth of work. Yeah, as you would expect locally if you yep. had to hunt around and find someone mm -hmm. in the West. Um, so what you do is you put a budget range down and then what happens is just like a free market, the freelancers will bid on the project and tell you what they want to be paid. And it may be an hourly rate if it's a, if that sort of model or it may be a fixed price. And you can look through the bids and so forth. And, 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 but the most important thing is go for quality first because the price is going to be so cheap mm -hmm. anyway that um, you're going to have you know, tremendous cost savings and, and that gives you tremendous leverage in terms of what you can do with, with your, ca your starting capital. Um, but you know the freelancers will tell you. You know the market will. The price discovery occurs in the market. As you post the job, you'll see the project. You'll see the bids coming in. You'll be able to negotiate with the freelancers. They'll tell you what they can do and what they can't do, and that's how you'll discover the price. Now let's talk about. So that's the entrepreneur yeah. who literally can start a company, start to finish, and do everything they need. Um, an extraordinary budget. Do you see larger corporations coming in and using freelancer? And talk a little about their their usage. Larger corporates are always a bit slow to kind of get in there and adopt new technologies. We, we see jobs all the time from Wells Fargo, General Electric, and so forth, but it's not part of any corporate, we, we're pretty sure it's not okay. part of any corporate organizational strategy to use you know, marketplaces like this. What it is is individual contributors who are sitting in their job going, wow, graphic design is going to take you know, till next week to return you know, my PowerPoint presentation. I'll just put $30 into Freelancer and get it done and just you know, move on, right? And so we, start, we see brochures from, you know, from, from Wells Fargo. We see you know, PowerPoint presentations from every, just about every company you can imagine. I mean, the, another, the other day, I, we, um, we got a guy who sent us an email from a big corporate. I can't remember which, which it was, but he had just won this major sales contract. And he went out celebrating with the client, got quite drunk, came back to his hotel room and realized, oh, my God, I've got a presentation to give tomorrow morning. What am I going to do? He jumped on Freelancer, put in $50. Uh, I posted a project, hired someone, sent them all the data and said, this is why I need my presentation. By the time he woke up in the morning, it was all done for him. <laughs> right? So um, if I had a PowerPoint presentation that I wanted to make good to great and yeah. make it beautiful, yeah. I could post that and say, hey, I'm looking for a designer to, to take this and, and make it a, a gorgeous presentation. But even more so, you get someone to analyze the data, um, put together beautiful figures and graphs, um, you know, crunch the numbers, um, you know, do mathematical modeling. Um, I mean, it's as sophisticated as you, as you think. I mean, when I, when I say I've seen actually jobs in quantum mechanics, I've seen you know, <laughs> pa Pakistani quantum physicists bid on jobs from you know, people in the US. I've seen you know, aerospace jobs go through where you actually look at it and they're doing computational fluid dynamics over a surface and you're going, hang on a minute. And you realize actually India has an aerospace in industry, of right? They do. And people are moonlighting, right? Um, you know, you, uh, there was a guy the other day um, who said he can do a tax return for me for my Australian tax for twenty dollars. I said, "How can you do this? How, how, how can you do a tax return? How are you even qualified for Australian tax?" He goes, "I've been doing this for a decade. You, what you don't understand is the mid mid-sized businesses and big-sized businesses have been doing this for years, right? So when you get your tax return done by a big accountancy firm, your tax is not being crunched in the U.S. or Australia. It's going offshore." There's people who are working and you know, who are trained up in, in the field doing a tax return. They send it back to the local partner who will look at it, go, "That looks okay, sign off," and they'll charge you the, the US dollar or the Aussie dollar rates, right? And, and so forth. I mean, so it's, I mean, it's amazing. I mean, it's 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 a, it's a whole new frontier out there in terms of what you've done. I, I have a corporate development team which I pay um, $6 an hour for out in the Philippines. And what they're doing is they're scanning the internet all day, and I've got the set of algorithms I provide them in terms of what I want them to do, where they're looking for acquisition opportunities for me. And they're, you know, they're running the numbers on there, looking, you know, do they, is there institutional backing, how much money is being put into this company, you know, looking at the metrics, how much revenue they're making, et cetera, and should this be something that Matt should take a look at maybe uh, as the next company to buy. There really is no limitation. I mean, I mean, the one limitation today is that you know, we're only really talking about jobs that can be done with a computer. Yes. Right. So we're not talking plumbing. We're not talking pest control. We're not talking <laughs> carpentry and so forth. So those jobs are, you know, are still being done in the conventional manner for the most part. Um, but we're talking you know, any job that can be done with a computer, any um, job that gets into the, sort of the information uh, space 
now. It's really frictionless, it's seamless, it's virtual, it can be anywhere. How should large companies be utilizing you? If you, you, know, if you had a, a room full of 30 to 50 CEOs yep. of large companies um, who are you know, worried about their next quarter performance and they're mm -hmm. worried about uh, becoming, you know, being Kodak versus Instagram, yep. you know, a linear versus exponential company, how should they be using it? Well, I mean, if I was a CEO of a big company, I would, I would basically make it a strategy to, you know, where possible as a, as a first step, try and use the resources on, on sites like Freelancer in order to you know, power the business. I mean, you can strip a ridiculous number, amount of costs out of, the, uh, out of this, some of these businesses. You can get a huge leverage in terms of productivity of every single person. I mean, like in, in my company, in Freelancer itself, every single one of my staff has to hire freelancers as part of their job to get things done. Right, so even though we're an organization of, you know, in Sydney, we've got, you know, globally we've got 200 people, in Sydney we've got 50. That 50 is now multiplied into several hundred, right, because you know, every one of the engineers or so forth is out there tapping into freelancers to you know, make their, their job easier, right, whether it may be you know, getting some SEO done or whether it may be you know, getting some design work done or, and so forth. So, um, you know, I would, I would definitely get, the, you know, probably starting with the, you know, the key thought leaders in your company, you know, on the platform, get, get them exposed to what it can do and how it can work, and then you know, really figure out how it can make it you know, part of you know, you know, everyday process in, inside the company. So how would a CEO compare the cost of doing it in their US-based company versus on Freelancer? On a direct comparison of a job being performed, say, on an hourly rate in somewhere like the US mm -hmm. and on Freelancer, it's about one-tenth. Right. In a large corporate, you also have all this other overhead in management and GNA and so forth on top of that, right? So we're talking a disruptive difference in terms of, of, of cost, um, uh, cost benefit. In terms of productivity, there's also leverage there as well because you've got to remember when we have a, you know, skill sets from 6.7 million freelancers in, you know, around the world effectively, where literally if you suddenly need um, a resource in you know, acoustic engineering or you know, genetic engineering or biotechnology or someone to give an expert opinion on a mathematical model, you can find it like that, right? I mean, we had someone recently who submitted a testimonial from the government of Victoria, right? Mm -hmm. And they came to us and said, Matt, um, the way we used to hire contractors in the past was I had to write up a description, I had to go to a committee, the committee then had to meet, the committee had to approve the job, we had to set what ba salary band we would pay for that job, we would then have to post it and gazette it internally within the, uh, within, um, the government uh, department, we would then post it on um, external job sites, we would get candidates, we would interview them over a series of weeks, I would have to get them a desk, a computer, a computer, a pass, security pass, a, you know, write these forms down, and it may be a six-week contract or a, you know, and so forth. And it cost me this much money. He goes, I posted a job in freelance the other day. Um, I, I, I put in $30. I, I posted the job. I had, you know, within a few minutes, I had people from you know, around the world you know, bidding on it. I hired someone, and the job was completed that same day in 12 hours. <laughs> and in the past, the way I did this would cost me you know, $100,000 cost me thirty dollars because this is just mind blowing to me in terms of yeah. just how easy in terms of time, speed and so forth and you know, and, and cost aside. So, you know, to again to concretize this for the for the CEO watching, yeah. you know, you're gonna get at least a tenth uh, of the cost. In other words, it's going to be at least 10 times cheaper. It could be 20 times cheaper, yes? Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, the way I would describe it to a CEO would be yes. this. Find some problem that you're trying to get solved yep. yourself yep. as an individual contributor, as a CEO, right? It may be that for uh, some presentation you're giving for some, you know, you know, some audience, you need to have some, uh, some numbers crunched or some you know, model developed or even just some, something as simple as some graphics put into a presentation for you, right? right. And give it a go, right? And then your mind will open once you see. I mean, for me, there really is a eureka moment where there's something, I mean, pick something that's hard. Don't pick something easy. Pick someone that you really want to get done and you're not happy with what your organization, you know, somebody in your organization is doing for you right now, right? Mm. Because let me tell you, the light bulb went off in my mind enough that I thought, this is just game changing. I need to get into this space. I, I, and I buy that completely. Yep. I, but I'm just going to hit the, the, these three points. Number yep. one, it's going to be at least 10 times cheaper. Yep. Right. Um, it could be 20 times cheaper, depending on what your rates are. And you said compared to the salary rates that you would get in India, Pakistan, parts of the world. Yep. Yes. Yep. And, and, and it's, it's cheaper, not just on a, a dollar basis, it's cheaper on the fact that you can actually, it's on demand. It's on demand. Right. You don't, so, so number two is uh, it, it allows you not to have to staff up your organization. Correct. So you have a more nimble, agile organization versus one that's more about with employees now that you have to find work for. So Correct. it allows you to become... Uh, have less overhead, 
Correct. Uh, which is another burden on your organization. Mm -hmm. uh, so that would be number two, uh, you know, the flexibility and, uh, and being nimble. Number three is I'm guessing um, that you have uh, far less cost risk because you're you're doing on a on a fixed cost basis many of these jobs. That's right. You're you're either doing it on a hourly basis where next hour you can say we're done with the project. I don't need you anymore. Or you're doing a fixed cost basis where you know what your costs are ahead of time and. They're small, right? So, I mean, it's extremely liquid. And I would bet, uh, number four, that uh, the time frames for these jobs being uh, finished uh, is probably faster than doing it internal to the organization. If I gave you a demo on just how quick and liquid the market is now, it would blow your mind. If I, post, <laughs> if I post a mainstream job like copywriting or web design or what have you, I can guarantee you within 60 seconds I'll have people bidding on the project. That's extraordinary. Right. The, the marketplace now is designed to be so, so real time that literally you post a project and within 60 seconds you're seeing things flashing up on the screen in real time and the bids will just appear. So if I had to, if I were to ask you to take a guess, mm -hmm. no guarantees, but a guess of how much faster if I wanted to get some work done internal to my organization mm -hmm. uh, versus uh, bidding it and having it done external uh, and getting the final product yep. done. Um, on the average, you know, is it going to be equally fast, twice as fast? What are your thoughts? You could take a project that maybe would take you two weeks to get done in a, in a, in a conventional organization and with follow the sun, post it at 5 p.m. as you leave work and have it arrive in your inbox 9 a.m. next morning. Awesome. So you literally are working a 24-hour uh, cycle yep. and, uh, and you're saying that you could see work done literally 10 times faster Absolutely. than an internal organization. So Abs 10 absolutely. times cheaper, 10 times faster. And that's right. I mean, that's... That is game changing. That is it is re a revolution. Of, definition of disruptive. Yes. Yeah. So what is the, you know, Matt, what is your ten year from now vision okay. uh, for not only freelancer but the industry that you're a leader of this yeah. this uh, dynamic global uh, employment on demand. Uh, knowledge. Well, I'll tell you. I mean, tell you the reason why I started this business. Yeah. Um, it was three and a half years ago, when I posted that first job, and I had the seventy-four people bidding on my job, and I thought this is game changing. I then thought to myself, why is there no eBay of jobs? Right. I mean, it's abundantly clear to me there is going to be a global marketplace for services, just like there are global marketplaces for goods. Right. The number of people are becoming more prevalent, smarter, more connected. There are five billion people connecting to the internet that will want a job. Yeah. Because the average wage they live on is eight dollars a day or less. In some cases, two dollars a day or less, or one dollar a day or less. Right. This is this is the this is the absolute ultimate dream for developing economies. And the internet is going to deliver so much prosperity uh, to these nations because people can now go online and their month's wage they can earn in twenty minutes. Or three hours, or three days, right? And so for me, I was, I just thought, why, why isn't there an eBay of jobs, right? There's, um, there's going to be a company with a you know, 20, 30, 40 billion market cap with you know, that business. Where I, how I think about, think about the business today is I want to be the global platform for international micro trade, right? So that's why we've gone into you know, you know, multi language, multi currency. We have a multilingual support team now. So if you go to freelancer.cl in Chile, you can transact in Chilean pesos to get a $30 project done in Spanish, and we have a support team that speaks Spanish that will you know, answer any questions you've got, right? We have a Portuguese-speaking support team, Filipino, Indonesian, and so forth. And you know, I really see the future um, having a, you know, a, you know, it's a bit like a social network for business, yep. um, whereby you can transact, it's casual business, so the street hawker in the Philippines can maybe talk to someone and, uh, and chat you know, with their friends in, in the local area, but also say, hey, can you do that logo for me for my new um, you know, cart that I'm putting together? Or can you, can you build a website for me? Can you get that mobile phone app for you? So m money is transacting. And it really is a very casual, global um, platform for you know, getting serv you know, services done. What's one of the more mind-blowing uh, examples of results from uh, from freelancer well one of the ones that made sort of the hair go up in the back of my neck was that um, yeah I thought well how far could you really take this if you, if you pushed it to the extreme right so you can get a logo done for a couple of hundred dollars what happens if I put something like you know, twenty five thousand dollars into this platform in a crowdsource sense what will happen so we posted a, 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 just a contest just a normal everyday contest it took me, took me about two minutes to type up where we said download our logo the freelancer logo promote it in your local area and we'll put up twenty five thousand dollars in the contest where the, the, the entry we like the most will give 10,000, then 5,000, 2,000, 1,000, and, and so on. We had 441 entries. <laughs> one of the teams, well, from Bangladesh, 
got 3,000 villages together, printed 3,000 t-shirts with our logo, 3,000 bandanas, 3,000 flags, and they unveiled the 2,400 square foot sign. It was so big on the video, I originally thought it was CGI graphics. I was just looking at this going, is this, is this real? <laughs> they marched the villages into a stadium and taught them all how to, how to use my website uh, on laptops, right? <laughs> and that was one entry out of you know, 440 entries, right? And then in, in Nepal, some, a team hung a giant banner off the tallest tower in Nepal. Pakistan, you know, Taiwan, uh, Philippines, and so That's on. That's insane. Uh, they made a blimp in the Philippines. In the Philippines, they made a blimp. They got the <laughs> circus performers together. They got a giant robot dressed up as a freelancer man. They marched uh, through um, a, a township, um, you know, playing songs and so forth, and made a music video. Right? It was. It, it's mind blowing. <laughs> that is mind blowing. Yeah. That is, I mean, we underestimate how much the capital we have here in the U.S. and the, the, the developed world is worth to people, to the other five billion people on the planet. If you're in the Philippines, in Manila, for example, and you have a university degree and you come out into the mainstream workforce, which is you know, BPO, um, your starting salary is around $220, $230 a month, right? You know, school kids in the U.S. have access to that sort of money, right? Where they can actually employ someone for a month to do something for them and build a business or build a build a little website or you know revenue streams and so forth. So this is why I think you know in the West what we need to be thinking about is um, create a job, don't take a job, right? We should all be thinking about being entrepreneurs and starting businesses, and we all can now. The capital efficiency of the internet business model is unprecedented. So right? li literally, if you want to do something big and bold on the planet, yeah, this is the power to do it. There, there. You know, you're empowered to think as, as grand as you possibly want because you're, the people that you tap into can empower those dreams. You're only limited by your imagination now, right? You can have a spark of an idea as you know, Tom Friedman. Um, there's actually a quote from Tom Friedman, yeah. you know, the multiple, multiple Pulitzer Prize winning author. He said, you can have a spark of idea now. You can get a designer in uh, Taiwan to design it. You can get the prototype produced in China. In Vietnam, you can get mass produced. And on the freelancer, they can do your back office, your logo, and so forth. Right. I mean, it, it really now, I mean, it, you, you could be one guy sitting in a room with a few thousand dollars and off the back of a credit card, you can build a multi-billion dollar, you know, multi-million dollar company. That's extraordinary. And you're no longer, you know, sort of limited to, I'll, I'll build an app. I mean, you could actually design spacecraft probably with this thing. I, if I actually looked through uh, the projects, I would think that, you know, around the periphery of the, of the space program, you'd probably see some things getting done. So let's start with quality. How do you assure quality on Freelancer? It's through an algorithm. Okay. Right. So the more jobs you do and the higher your rating and the more you get paid, the higher you gain what we call a reputation, which is a metric. Mm -hmm. So the higher your reputation, the higher you appear in the list of bids mm -hmm. and the lower your reputation, the lower you are. Right. So the guys at the bottom of the list are just starting out and they have no feedback. And the, the first job is the hardest job they'll ever win. Mm -hmm. The guys at the top of the list, we've got a guy I mentioned in India, started with two guys in the room now making a million dollars a year doing websites, $100, $200, $65. Right. Uh, we have a lady in the Philippines making $400,000 a year doing $30 logos, right? Because you know, her reputation is at the top of the list for logo design and so on. If you do a good job, you rise through the list quite rapidly. If you do a bad job, you drop. So it's, it's really like a page rank algorithm, uh, okay. which Google has, but yeah. it's for us, and it works extremely well, right? And if you do great customer service and a great job, your earnings potential explodes quite rapidly. So as the buyer of the service, I actually see a person's price, uh, I see the conditions of their bid, and I also see the quali their, their quality rating? Yeah, you, 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 you see them ordered in terms of reputation. Okay. Um, if we particularly like someone, we'll put a recommended arrow on them. Okay. You see every uh, job they've ever done, how much they'll pay, qualitative and quantitative feedback for each of those jobs. You can browse and see you know, the last you know, 500 jobs someone's done, how much they'll pay, the feedback, you know, and a multi-dimensional rating, communication, quality, professionalism, on time, on budget, and so, so you on. really are creating a perfect market. Um, in many ways, and some economists I have spoken to have said it's, it's, it's you know, the closest um, you know, you know, physical um, examples of, a, of like a frictionless marketplace that's, in, that's in, a, in a way. That's extraordinary. Mm -hmm. So uh, how does freelancer make its money? How do you, what's yeah. your business model? So we're a bit like eBay and PayPal combined. Mm -hmm. So if I hire you to a job, I'm a, and I'm, I'm an employer. It's free for me to sign up. It's free for me to post the job. It's free for you to sign up from anywhere around the world and free for you to bid on a project. Right. And then as I pick you and as I pay you money, we take a commission. So we charge between zero and 3% from the employer. And we take between three and 10% from the, from the um, freelancer, depending on whether you're on a free plan. We have some paid plans as well sure. to get that commission down. And so really- you know, Very reasonable. It is. And then the way the money comes into the system is through either you know, bank transfer, PayPal, money bookers, web money, 
um, and so forth. Uh, and then the way you get paid, and you might be in Bangladesh, I can show you an example here, <laughs> is again, um, you know, bank transfer, pay, you know, PayPal, money bookers, and we've issued uh, tens of thousands of these cards. So you can access any ATM in the world that MasterCard has and get your funds out. And in many circumstances, we, prov we provide the sole banking uh, to these freelancers. So can you go over some of the stats on your marketplace again? Right. And just what are the, what are the hardcore numbers uh, that, you're, that, you, that you speak about? Well, abstractly, yes. if software is eating the world and every industry is waking up quite disruptively to be a software business, we are in the very, very early stages of replicating a country in software. Okay. So our population has just got to almost 7 million people and growing, and that's growing exponentially. So that's the population of freelancers and customers? Freelancers and employers. employers. So about, yeah, it's about 75%, 80% freelancers, and about 20, 25% um, employers. Okay. Um, and so in the US, 50% of the jobs come from the US, 10% from the uh, United Kingdom, 7% from India, 5 to 4% from um, Australia, Canada, and so on. In terms of freelancers, 34% of their jobs get done in India. Pakistan and Bangladesh, Philippines, China, and again, a very, very long tail. Um, How many countries do you have freelancers from and employers from, roughly? Uh, every country on the planet. Every country. 234 countries, regions, territories, globally. We have people in Pakistan, I'm oh, sorry, let's start again. Uh, 234 countries, countries, regions, territories, globally. We have people in um, uh, the Vatican, uh, Antarctica, and North Korea, actually, is on the website. And I don't know what they're doing, but they're definitely <laughs> on the site. That's fantastic. Yeah. And in terms of, in any one day, the number of uh, jobs that you get that get posted and filled and so forth? And so at the moment, it's about 3,000, 3,500 a day jobs globally. That are posted? They're being posted, yeah. Right. And uh, what is the, you know, the smallest job and the largest job that you've seen posted? So the smallest job, we actually have a floor on the small jobs. The floor is $30 US. Okay. Um, and that can range from 20 minutes worth of work to maybe a few hours worth of work, depending on you know, what you're actually getting done. And the biggest job we've seen get done is probably around quarter million dollars. And that's a very you know, monthly ongoing retainer. Um, in this case, it was to build a whole library of web templates for, a, um, for an online business. Fantastic. So this has huge implications to jobs and job creation. Mm -hmm. Job creation in the developing world and villages that are literally, you can become the, the economic engine for creation. And it also potentially has implications for jobs domestically here in the United States. Could, mm -hmm. you, could you speak about that whole vision? So um, the other day I went to New Delhi and I went and met some of the top freelancers in, 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 that, in that city. And um, you know, all the entrepreneurs came, so all the freelancers came in and they're all immaculately dressed and they you know, had their nice little suits and their handlebar mustaches <laughs> and so forth. But what was amazing is when they came in, some of them were actually crying when they shook my hand. And I knew who they were because I'd seen some of the testimonials they'd left. And literally, some of these guys were living on the streets, couldn't afford to feed themselves, couldn't afford to eat, and now they've all got small businesses. They all tell me they're hiring people. They maybe have twenty thousand dollars in the bank. They love to tell me they're all married. I think because they can afford the dowry now. Right. Uh, and they're all basically becoming little economic engines of growth in these countries, right? And so I think this is a, a, a really fantastic way that we can get the, the you know the, the, the playing field um, fairer in the developing world by by providing jobs in technical areas. And the great thing is that it helps as a productivity engine for the West, right? So if you're a small business and you want to get things done, you're a cafe, you're in, you're in Kansas somewhere, right? You want to get a website built, you want to get an iPhone application so you can deliver orders, you might want a new logo, you might want some ideas for new recipes, you might want to write the business plan for the cafe and say, hey, you, you, you're in the wrong, um, you know, wrong industry, maybe you should be changing you know, the types of food you're serving because there's higher margins or you know, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you're only limited now by your imagination. And so you can build a virtual multinational corporation on a shoestring budget at 4 a.m. in your underwear. Wow. Job creation domestic. Yep. Uh, is, are there freelancers in the U.S. that are making a living uh, from your platform? They are, but they're turning the whole thing on its head, right? Talk about that. I would not, as a freelancer, encourage you to jump into a marketplace like ours in the US and you know, bid on a logo design job um, because you know, the days of that are over, mm -hmm. right? We have globalization and so forth and you have a big pool now. And, but the way in which um, freelancers are making huge money on, on, our, on our website, web designers, graphic designers, is by turning around and starting businesses themselves, right? You know, design is a fundamental part of consumer internet today. The difference between the Airbnb billion dollar business and a website which doesn't take off is design, 
right? It's around uh, you know, economic uh, consumer um, behavior, behavioral economics, and so forth, user experience, and so on, right? And so what these uh, service organizations are doing is they're just churning out and becoming app factories. They're becoming website factories and going, what about a website for this? What about an app for this? And they're doing the design and the concept for it. And they're hiring the programmers at the back end to build it and just churn them out and get them into the app store or whatever it may be. And so the biggest users globally from an employer side for us are the freelancers of old, of, of the Western economies who actually now are creating jobs rather than taking jobs, rather than thinking about themselves as, oh, I want to bid on a website project or I want to bid on a you know, logo project. What they're doing now is they're saying, no, no, I want to create websites, create revenue streams, and ultimately build wealth for the country, which is fantastic. Matt Barry, I am uh, thrilled to have this interview with you. Uh, I cannot imagine a force for good, mm -hmm. a force for creating bold and meaningful work and projects and really allowing entrepreneurs to take on the world's biggest challenges in partnership through you as the marketplace. I couldn't say the same thing about you and Singularity University. <laughs> so yeah, thank you very much for having me. Matt, a, a pleasure. I look forward great. to working with you. Thank you. Great. Thank you.